Welcome back to our series on rose and perfumery. So in this series, we've been taking a deep dive into rose. We started off by looking at rose itself, and now we've been drilling down into the different constituents of rose. So we've already covered the terpenes, the aldehydes, and the phenol constituents. Now in this video, we're gonna take a look at possibly one of the most important groups of aroma chemicals in rose, and that is the damascones and the ionones. So if you're interested in those, stay tuned and find out in this video. Right, okay, so the damascones and the ionones. Two distinct groups, but chemically they're actually very, very similar, and for that reason, I'm covering them both in the same video. So, in rose, apparently beta damascone and also beta damascenone are two of the most important aroma chemicals for the smell of rose. Now, one of those Beta damascone I have right here, and we're gonna examine that and smell it in this video. The other one, beta damascenone, is only different by one double bond, and unfortunately I don't have it, though I probably really should for this video series because apparently it is potentially the most important uh, aroma chemical for the characteristic odor of rose, and apparently it contributes, according to the book Scent and Chemistry, a whopping 70% to the characteristic smell of rose. Anyway, we're going to be looking at some other damascones and also some ionones, and we'll see what they're like. You must be thinking then that, well, if these damascones are so important in rose, surely they're found at quite a high concentration. Well, in fact, they are not at all. In fact, they're only found in tiny, tiny amounts. It's just they contribute in an outsized way to the actual perceived effect of the smell. And even in rose bases, they're not uh, pushed up to high levels. And the reason for that is the IFRA, or the regulatory body that governs the safety of the levels you're allowed to use things at in fragrances, they actually have quite a strict limit on the amount of damascones or rose ketones as they're collectively called in your final fragrance. That limit currently stands at 0.043% for fine fragrance products, though of course, disclaimer quickly, this isn't a strict advice. It might have changed by the time this video is published or by the time you're watching it. And also, um, this is not legal advice, do not take my word for the final uh, thing of what is a safe level to use things at in your perfumes. Definitely go check out the standards and the guidelines for yourself. Anyway, so these rose ketones or these damascones, together they're limited at 0.043% in the fragrance. The good thing is that they actually contribute to uh, quite well to the, the actual fragrance or the way that the fragrance smells. So, according to the book Scent and Chemistry, um, actually, without rose oxide, which we covered in the terpenes video, beta damascone, which we're going to cover in this video, beta damascone, which is that one that I don't have, and also neryl oxide, something that I'm not covering because, again, I don't have it, unfortunately, even though they only contribute about 1% of the total rose oil, without these things, apparently, it's not possible to create a convincing or realistic damask rose recreation. Now, before we get on to smelling these, another important point to note is Arc Tander, who's a writer about perfumery raw materials, he notes that ionones are extremely unstable. And given that the structure of ionones and damascones are quite similar, I assume it's also the case that the damascones are quite unstable. Apparently, on prolonged storage, they develop sour or harsh top notes, and it's wise to recheck the way they smell every three to six months. This is important because I've got some damascones here, and I remember these things smelling differently than the way they smell now. So if I go and smell these in front of you, let's start with the alpha damascone. So all these things are diluted down to 1%, by the way. So this alpha damascone, when I go to smell this, this one is actually not too bad. It's kind of similar to how I remember it, so I can give you a, a reasonable depiction of what it's like. So to me, it's got a very, firstly, it smells kind of earthy, which is interesting. And secondly, it smells a little bit, it has this kind of tobacco nuance, so it's very slight. Though I do find the longer you leave this on the scent strip, the more the tobacco nuance comes out. But also, as is the case for all of the Damascoons, they really remind me of the smell of cooked apples, which I find really interesting. And I think they smell really kind of deep and complex, they've got this kind of slight darkness about them, um, but they're also, they're very rich, and it, it, they're really interesting smells. So this, by the way, at 1% is more than you would actually be allowed to have in your perfume. And I assume that uh, most of the effect from these things is by adding them 
on top of your rose accord in these trace amounts. So I guess when you're smelling them on their own, it's a bit unrepresentative of what they actually do to your formulas. But nonetheless, I really like the way they smell on their own, and I think it's quite nice to be able to smell them like this. I guess this is one of the perks of making your own perfume. You actually get to smell these things that no one else gets to smell. So yeah, this is that Alpha Damascone. And apparently the Alpha Damascone is actually found um, in some things like tea. I'm not sure if it's actually found in the rose, maybe it is to a tiny degree. And I do think you do get a little bit of a tea-like nuance as well with this, which is quite interesting. So next, the Beta or Beta Damascone. This one is the one that is found um, quite a bit inside of the rose, definitely out of the Damascones, apart from the Beta Damascinone, this one is definitely out of these three at least, the one that is the most prominent in rose. But when I go to smell this, um, it doesn't smell how I remember it smelled when I first bought it. And interestingly, so I've done this experiment uh, recently in preparation for this video, and when I leave this Beta Damascone on the scent strip for a couple of days, it starts smelling how I remember it. But when I've just dipped it now and I've gone to smell it again, it smells kind of completely different. And this is why I mentioned that before, that it seems like these ionones, but also I assume the Damascones can be unstable because it seems to me that this has kind of gone off somehow. And it doesn't make sense because I did buy this like two and a half years ago and that text did say three to six months it's possible that it goes off in that time. So at the moment it smells kind of weird, it smells a bit herbal, um, almost in a linalol kind of terpene-like direction, um, some kind of herby foliage smell which is not uh, how it should smell or how I remember it smelling. But I did make some notes, so when I leave this on the scent strip, and this is how I kind of remember it smelling before, it firstly smells fruity, again it smells earthy just like the Alpha Damascone, I would say the Alpha Damascone smells kind of fruity as well, and it gives me this uh, cooked apples or decaying apple smell, which uh, I kind of like for some reason, and I guess it's probably that decaying apple smell um, that also really reminds me of autumn leaves, and it even kind of conjures up in my head the image of a graveyard or something like that, though I guess that's just more of a personal interpretation of the smell. So this uh, Beta Damascon, I really do like the smell. I do think it's a shame that mine seems to have gone off to some degree. Um, so maybe I should get some more at some point, though of course um, it, it, it's kind of maybe useless as well until I have a good use for it because otherwise I'm just going to be topping it up every six months maybe to smell it once or twice. But if I were to make a actual perfume where I use this, for sure I would go and buy some new Beta Damascone to use in that. Anyway, finally the Delta Damascone. So this one I think smells more different um, from the other two than the other two smell from each other. And this one kind of smells how I expect it to smell. I don't think this one's gone off that much either. I think it's really the Beta Damascone of mine that's gone off. Um, but I'm going to look at my notes as well to compare. I think this one went off just to a small amount. But what I smell when I smell the uh, Delta Damascone is I really feel like it's got more of a woody side and definitely more of a pine needle, that kind of side to it. And I would go so far as to say to me, this smells like how, how you know, vetiviral acetate smells to vetiver oil. Well, to me, this Delta Damascone almost smells a bit like how I would expect a pine needle essential oil and acetate version of that to smell. I know that's quite a weird thing to say, it's quite abstract, but I definitely get this kind of resinous pine smell from it, but I still get those tobacco and those apple nuances as well. Again, all of these things, I feel like the longer you leave them on the scent strip, the more that that kind of tobacco um, tonality in the smell comes through. So that's the Damascones. I've got another thing here which actually structurally is very similar to the Damascones, even though it's technically not a Damascone, but it also smells very similar, which is why I'm going to show you this. This one, I'm pretty sure it isn't found in rose, but because it smells the same, it's feasible that you might want to go and use it in some place where you would go and use the Damascones. So this one is ethyl saffronate. And I've actually got this diluted down to 10% instead of 1% like the other ones. And this one, I would say really, um, that kind of cooked apple smell is stronger. I would say maybe the kind of rich complex um, smells are less. So you still do get the kind of hints of earthiness and tobacco, those kind of things. Though I would say this one is definitely sweeter um, and maybe a little bit more synthetic kind of smelling, though not to a crazy degree. 
I still think it smells it smells quite nice. And actually, I do think you just do get a little touch of a saffron smell in there as well. And this one I found to be definitely very much a top note, whereas the other Damascones, I found them to be more of a mid note, maybe even leaning towards a base note. I don't know why this ethyl saffronate, even though structurally it looks quite similar, um, for some reason it just seems to behave more like a top note for me. Anyway, I later found out when I was looking at that book, Scent and Chemistry, that 3-hydroxy beta damascone, so that's just a slightly different version of beta damascone, it has a small modification on the molecule, that actually does occur in tobacco. And that kind of now makes sense to me now why these smell like tobacco, because if that one's found in tobacco, then I guess that general smell is likely to remind you of tobacco. I also found out that the beta damascone and the beta damasconone, the one I don't have, these are the most abundant in nature, and they not only contribute to the odour of tobacco, but also raspberries and cooked apples, which explains a lot of that cooked apple smell I was getting. Though apparently it doesn't stop there, they are also found in things like wine, coffee, and even beer. Anyway, now let's look at the ionones. So when you look at the molecular structure, you can see that the only difference between the ionones is that this ketone, this double bond oxygen, unit on the molecule, it's been kind of shifted across and swapped with the position of this double bond. Otherwise, the structures are pretty much exactly the same. So, the ionones, the thing about these when you go to smell them is that they're really prone to causing olfactory fatigue. That's when you smell something and then you can't smell it anymore because you're getting used to it. So these things, when you smell them, firstly, you kind of want to smell them in dilution if you can, but also don't smell them for too long and don't smell them too deeply because otherwise when you go to smell them again you won't be able to smell anything and you'll get confused wondering <laughs> what they actually smell like. So apparently the ionones are used in violet and raspberry fragrances but the alpha ionone is more widely used in violet whereas the beta ionone is more widely used in things like raspberry and it's traditionally regarded as being closer to a cedarwood or more of a woody side of the smell whereas that uh, alpha ionone is regarded as a bit closer to the violet side of the smell. So I've got both of these two here, the alpha ionone and the beta ionone. So let's start with the alpha. Now, when I smell this alpha ionone, I immediately get a very powdery um, violet-like smell, basically. And it's quite a pleasant smell, I must say. It does give me hints of kind of woodiness as well. Reminds me of the same kind of powderiness of ISOE Super, and indeed when you look at the molecule ISOE Super, that doesn't look that different from the ionone molecules either, so it's possible there's some kind of relationship there between the way those molecules look and the way they smell. Anyway, overall I would say the alpha ionone, it's just a very nice, pleasant smell. It sits somewhere between violet and raspberries, and it is definitely a smell I could keep on uh, smelling all day if I could go and smell it. I don't think this one I've got has gone off too much, even though I've had it for a lot of years. Um, though the beta ionone that I've got, this one, I've had a few more problems with. So the beta ionone, I actually went and replaced my beta ionone recently, and that was simply because the one that I had, I was smelling it, and it just wasn't smelling nice anymore. It kind of smelled just strongly of shoe polish, to be honest, and I felt that um, I remember it being a lot more kind of raspberry-like and woody and nice and also violet-like as well. Um, actually, when I first smelled the ionones, I remember really not being able to smell the difference very well between the alpha ionone, the beta ionone, and also the alpha isomethyl ionone, which is another one I'm not going to cover here, but I covered that in the Grosjean Accord video, so if you're interested in the way that smells, go check out that video as well. Anyway, now I've spent a lot more time training my nose, I'm a lot better able to distinguish between the different ionones and recognize them uh, to some degree. Maybe if you gave me some alpha and beta ionone blind, I still wouldn't uh, be able to distinguish between them, but I think the chance that I've got would be a lot better than when I first started perfumery, I would have no chance at all. So anyway, this beta ionone, now when I smell this, I do get a kind of slight shoe polish nuance still, I'm not sure if this is because this is off or this is just actually how it smells. I'm not even too sure anymore. But you do also get a kind of woody, raspberry, slightly violet smell with this one as well. And I do also find the longer you leave it on the scent strip, uh, the more that shoe polish smell goes away and the more you're left with what you would expect, which is that classic violet-y uh, iron smell. So again, maybe this has gone off a little bit. 
And one thing uh, both of these ions really remind me of is the Palmer Violet Sweets. I don't know if you ever had those, but they've got this distinctive uh, violety taste. I assume they must use some ions as part of their flavoring because they really, really remind me of those. Anyway, so all of these Damascones and ions are found inside the rose at tiny, tiny amounts, but they do make up an important part of the odor. In fact, according to that book, Sand and Chemistry, the beta ion is found at 0.03% in the rose oil, yet it makes up for 19.2% of the perceived smell, which I think is crazy. That means it's more important in terms of perceptual odor than neril, which is found at a level 230 times greater in concentration. So it just goes to show that our nose can be sensitive to certain molecules more than other, and that means even having them at a tiny concentration can be enough to make them more powerful to the way we perceive the smell than other ones that we detect um, less sensitively. Anyway, I would be very interested to see how um, these ions and damascones go to affect the rose accords because when you smell them on their own, they do smell really nice, but they also don't distinctively smell to me of rose. I feel like it's the modifying effect that they must have at much lower concentrations that actually goes to um, kind of bring the rose to life. So hopefully we'll go and find that in one of the later videos when we go to make the accord and we'll see what happens when we add them into the blend. So that's it for the video on Damascones and Ionones. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time with another video on rose. And next time we're going to do a final video on some raw materials. It's a few miscellaneous things which aren't even found in rose, but they also just kind of smell like rose. So if you're interested in finding out about those, do stick around for those videos. And after that, we'll be moving on to the accords and the blending. So I'll see you soon.